Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Let's do a Fallout TV show review. First off, there's going to be spoilers. I don't know exactly what. I'm spitballing a lot of this. I'm just popping off the top of my esophagus. So I'm just going to say in advance, spoilers are coming up. If you haven't finished the show, stop. Come back when you finished it. Also, I know I've said multiple times that I don't review things. I don't like to review other people's work. But I'm going to talk about the show. A lot of people are asking. And at the end, I'm going to link you to a review that is better than mine, that I watched, I liked a lot, I agreed a lot with it. So you can just go watch that one and go, okay. Um, also, because I know I have a tendency to ramble, I'll just say right now, I like the show. There. For people who don't want ramblings, you can just stop, leave. Tim said he liked the show. There you go. Um... So now I'm going to ramble. <laughs> just so you know, it was just as surreal to be home again, sitting on my couch, dog snoring, watching Fallout on my TV. It was just as surreal as watching it in the theater, the Chinese theater down in Hollywood. And it's hard to explain to this. It's hard for me to explain unless you've worked on it. And, and I actually, I've talked to Leonard about this, but... That, that surrealness that when you see this, the thing you worked on really hard and all these ideas and visuals and um, just to see it in, in real life realized. You know, they had huge sets, uh, amazing production values on them. I talked about that. Amazing props. The acting was phenomenal. I mean, it was just surreal to watch Fallout recreated in real life like that. In many ways, I felt the same way as when I did Nuka Break. Um, I, I mean, they had a much smaller budget, but they were dedicated. It was very fallouty. They cared. There was a lot of attention to detail, even on Nuka Break. And you can go watch my video on that. I'll, I'll link it below. All these things, if I mention a video, it's linked below. You can go watch it. It was really cool to be on that set and to take part in it in my very limited eye shooting out cameo. But watching this TV show, I felt a lot of the same thing. Now, I know when I talked at the premiere, I tended to just, I was i was so overwhelmed. It was it was on a huge screen. I think it was IMAX. And I was just like, wow, I was looking at everything. I paid a lot more attention to the story and the dialogue in this one. And what I can tell you, the reason I like it so much is everything feels like Fallout. It feels like Fallout. That is hard to do. Trust me, I know how hard that is to do. It's easy to write post-apocalyptic stuff that doesn't fit in the fallout mold. <clears throat> and it would have been very easy for them to accidentally go off to be too silly, to have things that are like, that's not part of fallout. Um, but they didn't. In fact, one thing I loved about this show so much, there was a lot of lore drops. I missed stuff. I've watched videos where people try to find all the Easter eggs. I've seen people throw up Reddit threads where they notice something that I'm like, I watched that. I did not see that. Um, what I especially love about it is there's no exposition. Exposition. There was never a narrator explaining this stuff to you. There was never a character who had some big wall of text it would have been in the game or some really long VO. There was nobody going, and just to remind you, these vaults were built over 200 years. You don't need to know that. You can figure it out. Yes, I think it makes the game or the TV show a little more, a little harder to get into than somebody who, if you haven't played the games, I think you've got a bit of a bump there to try to figure out everything that's going on. But I believe it's something you can figure out. Um, I will talk again the time where Lucy stopped to ask for directions from that guy working on the sand filter um, and he drank all of her water. That guy looked straight out of Fallout as one of our village characters. And that that's what I'm talking about, the feel. That's what gets me in the feels. Many of you probably saw that, never knew that. Just thump. But that gets me. That made me go, ooh, that's so Fallouty. And that's... That's what I wanted. Everything is not going to be perfect. Everything's not going to be just like it in the games. Because guess what? This isn't a game. This is a TV show. But the feel was right. And that's what I liked. Um, one thing I thought was particularly cool was the three main characters felt like different ways that a player character could be approaching the game. You had Lucy, who was the nice character. Uh, started off a bit innocent. Didn't stay that way. But wanted to go out and do good. 
you know, had a had a had an ethical system, and I'm going to be a good good person. Maximus, he had his own goals. Some would call him selfish, but he had his own things he wanted to do. He wasn't going out of his way um, to be a bad guy, but he had goals he wanted to achieve, and he was going to achieve them. I know players like that. And then, of course, the ghoul. Um, he was pretty much the show's murder hobo, which many of you play the game that way. So do I. Um, he, but but all of them had arcs that they changed over the course of the show, and you learn things about their background, like why are they the way they are. Um they all changed during the show, which I love because it sets the three of them up for what's going to happen in season two. I hope there's a season two. Um, I think there's going to be a season two. Um, the show in that sense felt like a game that Lucy's the main character. She starts off, you get her background. She starts off on her main quest, which is find her kidnapped father straight out of Fallout 3. And then, you know, in Fallout 4, you're looking for your son. I guess th that whole let's find a family member thing is very big in Bethesda's Fallout. So... You shouldn't have been at all surprised to see it here. But it feels like she started off and in the first episode or two it was all about the main quest. Then all these side quests open up. And it went in all different directions. It went in places you didn't expect. Um, and then the main quest completes at the end, but in a way that makes you go, I have more questions. I would like to play the sequel now. Um, I want to know what's going to happen here. I, and I love that. That's a good way for a game or a TV show or a movie to end. You got a lot of your questions answered, but there were some new questions that arise that you want to know. You want to know the answers to. So, um, by the way, I'm not going to give it away, but like I had to text Leonard. I think it was episode seven, and I said you have to watch this because I was seeing the cameos. It totally got me when Eric Espera showed up as the 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 father of the people who were doing metal. Um, they were looking. They had metal detectors, and they were looking for stuff. I'll admit, the voice is what triggered me. I'm like, he sounds like Eric Spera. <laughs> saw him. I'm like, wow. And by the way, I hope I age as 10th as well as Eric Spera has because I watched Chips. And I'm like, I'm like falling apart here and Eric Spera looks great. So him, I mean, just some of the other surprise cameos got me. Um, but then there were some, some lore surprises. And let's talk about that. Um, let's talk about vault Tech nuking first and let's talk about shady sands being nuked because i see a lot of people talking about that um and let me give you my opinion on this i know a lot of people giving you opinions and here's another opinion but um first of all yes vault tech did talk about nuking first if you've ever been in, in a company they will have business plans that try to handle different contingencies. But I don't think they nuked first. I, I really don't think they did. Because would Barbara didn't strike me as a stupid woman. Would she have sent her daughter to a birthday party on the day vault -Tec was going to nuke? I think they were planning on nuking. It was one of their strategies that they were thinking about. Which is enough to go, wow, vault -Tec is evil. But I don't think they nuked. I think they were a bit caught off guard too when nukes came in um similarly i think shady sands being nuked might go a lot of different ways i know people are complaining about the dates being off well you're right maybe they are off maybe maybe what was taught to the kids was wrong maybe it was deliberately wrong maybe they were lying to the kids they lied to the kids in vault 33 about other things why not lie about that or um Maybe they're off, but they don't know they're off. Maybe it's just a few years either way. Or maybe the dates in the games are off. Maybe Fallout New Vegas, some of the characters in that game, got the dates wrong. There's no like master calendar you can refer to. Maybe people got off. Maybe people knew what had the years wrong. Or maybe they're just unreliable narrators. Fallout has a history in a lot of the games of having people tell you something that isn't true. Um, so any of these could be unreliable narrators. And that's something I think you need to keep in mind because as far as the show goes, it's a good show. I'm along for the ride. I have no doubt in my mind that they may explain some of this stuff in a sequel, which I'm hoping we get, um, a season two, the, and even if they don't, let me just remind you that lore drift is inevitable in big IPs. Star Wars had a lot of lore drifting. I, I was old enough. I was a kid and went to see the first Star Wars in the movie theater. So when the second prequel trilogy came out and suddenly the Force was 
midichlorians. I was like, what? I mean, I still like Star Wars, but I'm, I was a, that was a what moment. And they backed up on that, if you've noticed. Marvel was the same way. I was never a big comic book person, so when I'd go to see the movies, I'm like, okay, that's that's fun. That was a fun movie, but people were going, oh, this is terrible. They've ruined the lore. Tony Stark had blue eyes. I'm like, I don't care. Um, now, so when I see people talking about this stuff online, I'm, I'm hoping that they, they address it. But you have to understand that not everything you're shown and told in the game might be true. And they might be setting you up for a shocker. I hope I didn't ruin anything. I hope I didn't... I don't know anything about season two. I didn't know anything about season one. So I hope I didn't accidentally reveal anything there. So let me just say, look back at a few of my videos. I talk about how hard it is to make an IP and maintain it. There's a whole video about that. Some of the issues I've seen there, I see here. Um, sequels are hard. I don't like doing sequels. I hope there is a sequel. You can consider this season one, though, to be a sequel. I've heard online they considered it Fallout 5. It's kind of like a fifth installment. I can see why. It's a bunch of stories told in the Fallout universe. Every single Fallout game changed a little in the games that came before. It's always happened. It's The lore has always drifted a little. Fallout 2 changed some things in 1. Fallout 3 changed some things in 1 and 2. Fallout 4 changed some things in 1, 2, and 3. It happens. So, then the last thing I just want to say real quick is for open-ended games like Fallout, I talk about how you have to pick a canonical ending when you do a sequel. Who knows what canonical ending they had in mind for these games that led to this Fallout TV show um, timeline. So I hope we find out. So let me just end up. I like the show. I like it a lot. If you want a full review, um, Char Lanazard has a channel and has a review on Fallout on it that I liked and I'll link it below. Basically what she said, I think I, I agreed with everything or almost everything she said in her review and she said it a lot better. So go watch hers if you want a full review and then know that like, you know, this is also what Tim Kaine thinks. So not that it matters. You know what? I'm not in charge of this anymore. Neither are you. Basically anything Bethesda does from now on, that's canon. So I think it's fun to talk about this though. I don't think it's fun when people make personal attacks about it. So cut that out, please. But certainly have fun with this show. Look at the lore. Look at the Easter eggs. You know, pick things apart. Have fun with it. But do it if it's fun for you. If you're doing it out of a, a spirit of just being spiteful, eh. And I skip over comments like that anyway now. There are way so there are so many people commenting on my channel now. I don't have time to read all the hostile stuff. So anyway, I like this show. Go watch the review if you want some more detailed um, notes about the show. But I liked it and I can't wait for a season two.